Use the means of today to reach the people of today. The Church Speaks, an episode where the Holy Father, the Pope, and the Bishops of the Philippines speaks about their apostolic letters and exhortations to all Catholic Christians. Pope at us Wednesday Mass said, Lent is a journey of return to God. As the Church begins the Holy Season of Lent, Pope Francis celebrated Mass for us Wednesday. In his homily, the Holy Father reflected on Lent as a journey to return to God and as an opportunity to deepen our love of our brothers and sisters. God, said the Pope, is appealing to our hearts and our entire being, inviting us to Him. It is a time to reconsider the path we are taking, he said, to find the road that leads us home, and to rediscover our profound relationship with God, on whom everything depends. He urged Christians to evaluate the direction our lives are headed, and how steadfastly we walk along our path toward God. The journey of Lent is an exodus from slavery to freedom. To the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Pope Francis said, the first step of Lent involves returning to the Father by accepting God's forgiveness in the sacrament of confession. It is the Father's forgiveness that always set us back on our feet, he said. Next, he said we need to return to Jesus like the leper who returned to thank him. We too need Jesus' healing. We need to present our wounds to him and say, Jesus, I am in your presence with my sin, with my sorrows. You are the physician. You can set me free. Heal my heart. Then, said the Pope, we are invited to return to the Holy Spirit. The ashes sprinkled on our heads, he pointed out, remind us that we are dust. Yet, upon this dust of ours, God blew his spirit of life. The Holy Father went on to note that our return journey to God is only possible because he first journeyed to us, because Jesus embraced our sin and death. Our journey then is about letting him take us by the hand. Our response to God's invitation to the Pope involves heartfelt reconciliation with the deeds and practices that express it. We shall return to this catechesis next Sunday. Horatio Imperata Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other to see us through this crisis and led us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities. 
but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Saint Paul the Apostle, pray for us. This Holy Mass is brought to you in collaboration with Ricardo O. Santiago Sr., Steve G. Santiago and Family, Stu and Nancy Santiago and Family, Stephen and Joy Santiago and Family, Sally Mae Santiago Lim and Benedicto Lim Jr. and Family, Sunny Boy and Luella Santiago and Family, Alex P. Montañez and Family, Mercy Evangelista and Family, St. John Paul II College of Davao, Royal Bread House Incorporated, Tat and Gigi Coronel and Family, Teresita Villa Abrile, T. Now Trucking Services, Davao Durian Laundry Services Company, Chardan, JDB Diversified Incorporated, Melvin E. Aviles, Quelan's Food House, Mr. and Ms. Lucas B. Datoy and Family, Jess and Amelia Dison, Gus and Sophie, Mrs. Ampi Icasas and Family, Adolfo and Malo Ato, Purita and Lorenzo and Family, Fe Yamido and Family. Offering of the Holy Mass Accept Most Holy Trinity, this sacrifice fulfilled at one time by the Divine Word and now renewed on this altar through the hands of your priest. I unite myself to the intentions of Jesus Christ, priest and victim, that I may be entirely offered for your glory and for the salvation of all people. Through Jesus Christ, with Jesus Christ, and in Jesus Christ, I intend to adore your eternal majesty, to thank your immense goodness, to satisfy your offended justice, and to beseech your mercy for the church, for my dear ones, and for myself. Amen. We pray for the intentions of our regular sponsors, choir members, donors, offers, and volunteers of this Holy Mass, especially the sponsoring group, Engineer Ernesto and Linda Aguilar and family, Oasis of Love Charismatic Community, Dabao headed by the Headmaster Henry Evangelista, Pilam Life Dabao Evangelista Agency. Thanksgiving Intentions, Nida Tumalip, Anonymous, Elsa Garcia and Family, Magdalena Kokam, Oasis of Love Charismatic Community Dabao, headed by the Headmaster Henry Evangelista, Pilam Life Dabao Evangelista Agency, Mariano and Pasita, Sia, Sam and Family. Good Health, Rita Montalban, Mercy Evangelista, Linda Aguilar, Ernesto Aguilar, Henry and Lolita Evangelista, Ryan Aguilar, Ashley Aguilar, Fanny Aguilar, Ernest Patrick Aguilar, Ernest Michael Aguilar, and Paul Marr. Birthday Intentions, Alice Ascona, Thelma Mercado, Zeni Ablang, Anna Farrell, Malu Yap, Sophie Zuluega, Brother Barry, SSP, Father Joel Baguna, SSP, Father Richie Gamaya. Special Intentions, Recovery and Healing of Emil Season, Pai Cadena, Regina Cispedes, Arnel Famador, Julie Sanz, Linda Torrejos, Arias and Bell Batong. For the eternal repose of Rodolfo, Bernardo, Milagros, Luciana, Jermin, Erlinda, Claudio, Thelma, Marutas, Julio, Minandro Sr., Anastasio, Filipa, Eduardo, Ernesto Sr., Manuel, Renerio Sr., Conrada, Domingo, Abraham Sr., Adelaida, Linda, Lourdes, Sofia, Antonio Cocam, Abner Apostol, Adelina, Elizabeth, Marcelina, 
Loreto Almacchio, Roberto Lourdes Salem, Feliciano Francisco Jr., Sinforoso, Estefania, Jaime Socorro, Honesto Cándido, Rubén, Eddie, Cecilia, Manuel, Paz, Leonila, Jacinto. Those who died of COVID-19 and all the souls in purgatory, all deceased benefactors, sponsors, and cooperators of the Pauline's Media Mission. Prayer for the sick. Lord and Father, God without end and Almighty, through your grace you gave us strength and help in our weakness. In your mercy, touch your sick people, deliver them from their sicknesses, and restore their good health, so that assured of your goodness and love, they will praise and thank you in your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, Today, the first Sunday of Lent, we focus our attention on Jesus, who is led by the Holy Spirit into the desert. There he spends 40 days and 40 nights fasting, reflecting, praying, and battling the devil victoriously. Then he begins his mission, inviting all to conversion. The fruitfulness of this Lenten season depends to a great extent on our response to his invitation. Today, we also celebrate the 30, 35th National Migrant Sunday. As our fellow Filipinos migrate to other countries, they may suffer hardships, loneliness, or abuse, but they also bring with them the richness of our Catholic faith and traditions. And this is a great opportunity for them to bring the light of Christ to all the people they will, they will meet. The presider of this Holy Mass is Father Greg de Mundamon, OSB, St. Benedict's Monastery, Cogon Digo City. The choir during this Mass is the FSP Choir, Pauline's TV Choir Chapel, Davao City. Let us joyfully celebrate the banquet of love. Please stand as we start the Holy Mass. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, today we are celebrating the first Sunday of Lent. And in this Lenten season, we are all called by the Lord for repentance and conversion, for healing and renewal. And so therefore, in this Eucharist, so that we truly receive these very graces of repentance and conversion and of our own personal healing and renewal, let us first acknowledge our own sins and ask God's pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, 
Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. After the purification brought about the flood, God is ready to make a fresh start with a few survivors. The covenant He intends to establish with Noah and his relatives is a sign of His enduring, merciful love for all human beings. The First Reading You are reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, See, I am now establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you, all the birds and the various tame and wild animals that were with you and came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you that never again shall all bodily creatures be destroyed by the waters of a flood. There shall not be another flood to devastate the earth. God added, This is the sign that I am giving for all ages to come of the covenant between me and you and every living creature with you. I set my bow in the clouds to serve as a sign of a covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the clouds, I will recall the covenant I have made between me and you and all living beings so that the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all mortal beings. The Word of the Lord. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. O Lord, make known to me, teach me your paths, guide me in your truth, and teach me, for you are God, my Savior. Remember 
that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from of old. In your kindness, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Upright is the Lord, thus he shows sinners the way, he guides the humble to justice, and he teaches the humble his way. Jesus Christ has saved all human beings through His passion, death, and resurrection. His salvation reaches us through the sacrament of baptism, which was foreshadowed by the purifying waters of the flood. Such is the message addressed to us through the passage we are about to hear proclaimed. The Second Reading a reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Christ suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. In it, he also went to preach to the spirits in prison who had been once disobedient, while God patiently waited in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few persons, eight in all, were saved through water. This prefigured baptism, which saves you now, it is not a removal of dirt from the body, but an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven, as is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory and praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for forty days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts. And the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. My brothers and sisters, 
This is the gospel of the Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ, by his own example, by which we have heard today in our gospel, consider it of grave importance, essential, necessary, and also as a matter of course, that before he plunged himself into his mission of establishing the kingdom of God, proclaiming the good news of salvation, and also the process of his paschal mystery in his salvific act of passion, death, and resurrection. Before he did all these things, he had first to go through the process akin to our time today, let us say, of going to retreat. He first went into the desert, staying there for 40 days, tempted and also living among and confronting also to a certain degree the wild animals in the desert. And yet at the same time, he was also assisted, helped, and ministered by angels. In his case, as a matter of divine nature, Supposedly, he did not necessarily need it. However, by way of an example for us, all the more we need it for ourselves. That is, before we go into important decision making, before we plunge ourselves into any form of activities, and even mission in life, and before even we continue our daily lives itself, it is very essential and important that we have to go through the process of healing and renewal. In many cases, it always saddened me to hear some people who are broken Families who are separated, individuals who are wounded and whose life are shattered, and yet they do not find time to mend their lives through the process of healing and renewal. They find it so difficult to spare time for this purpose. And I could hardly not understand why is it that is so essential in life that they could not find time for this purpose. To the point that life is already broken and even families that has been separated cannot anymore be mended. Nabungkag na, naguba na. In many ways, we try to solve the issues and the problems of this woundedness and brokenness in life when it is already too late. Abang ulahi na gani. Lisod na ayuhun. Lisod na ibalik ang kalinaw, ang reconciliation, ang forgiveness. Kay too much na ang brokenness sa kinabuhi. And there are so many families that suffered in this way and they bury themselves into busy lives that actually do not give them the true sense of joy and peace. All the more they busy themselves in the material goods and of the business of the world, all the more they plunge themselves into miseries, wretchedness, and brokenness in life. Kanang sayang kaayo. And I'm very sad of this, especially when it happens to my friends. Kanang may tabo gani ni sa ako ang mga kaila. Lately, I've heard 
usa nako ka family friends nga nay anak nga na, na broken na shattered nag relapse eh, ang problema and i am helpless ano bang wala koy matabang to a certain degree ang ako pong sadness ni ini is because in many cases i have also refrained myself in trying to offer the gift and blessings that God has given to me in the process of healing and renewal. It is akin to the gospel message of Christ nga daw gihatagan ko niya o suga nga kahayag na akong gibuhat, gitaguan lang nako sa ilalom sa banga o ilalom sa lamisa Yung ending pagid ni ini, kay gitaguan man sa ilalom sa lamisa ang kahayag, ang lampara, ang kandila, nga nagsiga, masunog, hinuon. Magdalahin, masunog ang ilalom, masunog ang tibuok, balay. So, to a certain degree, ang ako ang kasubo is also turning against myself for refraining to voluntarily offer the service that I could offer. That is through healing process. So, mo puna ang akong kasubo. And in many cases, people do not go this process of healing and renewal, of mending the brokenness of life. Tungod kai, they do not know that it is possible. Tungod kay wala sila nasayod nga posible di ay nga maulian ang atong pagka-brokenness, ang atong pagka-misery, ang atong pagka-wretched. Muna ang uh, walay opportunity for them. Or in another way of telling it, kanabang nagkulang og mga tao diin mao ka na ang ilahang mission. Or kaya, we lack the expertise in the field of healing. Not necessarily physical healing, sakit imong tiyan, nagpahiling ka, naulian ka, naayaw imong tiyan, kundili more on the psycho-emotional and psycho-spiritual brokenness and woundedness of our life. Na... Daghang mga tao wala nakago sa ani na process tungod kay kulang lang sa mga tao nga mao ni ilahang mission sa kinabuhi. Among ourselves as priests and religious, we all the more busy ourselves into the management and it could be also worse in business, negosyo, muna among kabisihan, project and constructions. Nakalimta namo nga ang essential na mensahe di ay namo sa mong mission alang sa kayuhan sa tao. Para sa tao, kayuhan sa tao, para sa kaluwasan sa tao. We bury ourselves even in our own vocation as priests and religious in worldly activities. Kay busy kaayumi sa management, busy kaayumi sa Pagpahiluna sa mong mga projects, busy kami sa construction, and whether we like it or not, busy po mi sa pagpangita o kwarta kaysa pagpangita diha sa pagpahiluna sa gingharian sa ginduo. And so therefore, this is the sad thing in our time today, that we do not take it into serious consideration to find time to really withdraw from the world, from the society, in order to go through the process of retreating so that we truly experience the joy of healing, renewal, peace, and conversion. So that, like Jesus, we are now truly engaged, more committed, and filled with zeal and inspiration to proclaim the good news of salvation 
so that we can also be instrument in the very grace of God's mercy and love for others who are broken, feeling helpless and hopeless, lost and afraid of life. Kinahanglan o necessary gayud kaayo kini o giyatagan gayud kita o example ni Kristo. And I just would like to go through the process of symbolism in the life of Christ in the desert. Una, he was tempted. Ikadua, he was with wild animals. Diha sa libro ni Saint Teresa of Avila, the interior castle, according to him, diha sa castle sa ato ang spirituhanong kinabuhi in the fullness of our joy as Christians, we have to go through the process of the different rooms in order to enter into the highest level of our Christian faith. And the first room, Matut Paniya, where we have to go through this process is a room where it is dark. Kung diya sa darkness, diya sa kwarto, you encounter wild animals. In fact, the symbolism of these wild animals and the dark room by which you first you have to enter before you have to move to the second room. Mo kini ang ato ang mga hurt feelings, mo kini ato ang mga dark life, mo kini ang ato ang mga secrets. To a certain degree, dili ta gusto musulod. Matud pa ni Madet ni Saint Teresa of Avila, even to the point of handling them. Kaya nung magunitan ka, hindi mo na mahadlo ka, magkapakapa ka, kay ngit-ngit. In many cases, according to him, there are so many people that who are not able to go through this process because of fear nga may gawas. Wala may padayon o dili gani musulod. Kay hadlok, kapoy, braglisod. But in fact, we cannot go through the another door by which we go to the grace of peace and healing if we have not yet undergone this process. Matud pa ni Teresa of Avila. Ugmaw po na ang kasinatian ni Cristo. He has to go through this desert where he had to encounter wild animals. Ugmaw ka na ang atong kasinatian of hurt feelings of problems and difficulties in lives, and even our shame and misery, wretchedness, and secrets in life. We have to go through it. However, the beauty also in our gospel today, there are angels who ministered and assisted Jesus in this process. So in our process also of undergoing to and through the secrets of our life, the hurts and shames of our lives, kinahanglan at doon na po yung mga tao ng mamahimong anghel sa itong kinabuhi where they could assist us, where they could guide us, where they could help us go through this process so that we will truly experience the joy of healing and renewal, conversion, and peace. For example, Ani kini istorya ni ni Father William Jarima. Father William Jarima is the founder of the Mercy Center, the Healing Center, also in United States of America in Colorado Springs. He also became and is also consider him as also my own personal mentor even today, although wala namin nagkita kita in the process of healing. According to his story. There was a man by the name John. John is a soldier by profession. He was once assigned in the Vietnam War. But after some time, he had the opportunity. He retired earlier than his age because he could not anymore continue the kind of service that he was doing in the Vietnam War. Then as a retired man, he decided to volunteer as a kind of a lay minister in a parish priest. And the parish priest was also so happy that he was a body-body in the ministry 
o sa serbisyo diha sa simbahan. So muni ang nahimong badibadi sa Paris priest si John. Then one day, John approached the Paris priest and told him, Father, you know what? I have a little problem. What is it, John? I feel that there is something wrong with our comfort room. Comfort room, our CR, there is a ton confet. It seems for me that there are some evil spirits roaming around that it exudes negative auras, diri, and the feeling of fear and eerie things. Na ay dautang espiritu na nagpuyo mga abat dari sa tung CR. Pwede ba na to blessingan na Father? Uh, John, blessing is always good. Ato ng blessingan. So, blessingan nila ang CR. After some time, John approached the Paris priest and told him, Father, thank you very much for blessing our CR. Now I could really feel that the evil spirits are gone and then the aura of the CR now exudes kaning peace. Malinaw na. Ah, salamat kayo sa ginoo, John. Then after some time, John again approached the Paris priest and told him, Father, sorry to disturb you, but we have kani more problem today than before. Pero makatabang kagdako, Father. Unsa man na, John, sa una kung ato ang siya lang, Father, ang gipusses o evil spirit, karon kay ang tibo o convent naman, na possess ang evil spirit, and I could really feel their presence and the negative effect that I feel within our convent. Can you bless it, Father? John, blessing is always good. So let us bless the whole convent. So, bising ng whole convent, bisbisa ng holy water. Then after the blessing, John approached him, Father, thank you so much. Now, our convent is blessed and are made and is made holy and so therefore, its aura exudes now peace and joy. Nawala na ang mga dautang spirito, nawala na ang mga abat. Salamat sa Diyos, John. But after some time, the worst case scenario happened not to the CR, not to the convent, not to the church, but to John himself. By this time, John appeared to be possessed by the evil spirit. And so the Paris priest reported this to the bishop, and the bishop sent his exorcist to examine John. And then the exorcist reported to the bishop, Bishop, this is an authentic case of evil possession. Ngunday ng bishop, okay, proceed the exorcism. So, the exorcise nila si John. Then after exorcism, girinyo siya sa iyahang baptism, girinyo siya sa iyang faith, and so on and so forth. Naulian si John, pero after some time, nibalik na po ang dautang spiritu. Wild kayo si John, dili makontrol, strong kayo sa patanan, and so they exorcised him again. Tapos, girinyo sa iyahang baptism, renewal sa iyang faith, naulian si John, pero nibalik na po ang dautang spiritu. According to Father William Jarima, I'm not so sure, more or less na lang siguro, around 14 times gi-exercise si John. Around 17 times ata to siya gi-renew sa iyang baptism. Around 24 times sa iyang faith. And yet in spite of all this, daw ang dautang mga espiritu nagpabilin diha po diha sa pagkatao ni John. Wala siya na ulian. And so, the exorcist gave up. Reported to the bishop, dili na ko ni Makaya Bishop, kaning more than it's more my own capacity and power to exorcise this man. You have to find somebody else nga mas kaning makabuhat ni ni kay sa ako. And so, the bishop finally discovered Father William Jerima. Father William, we have a case of evil possession in our diocese here. Could you come and help us? And Father William said, yes, Bishop, I will come, but not today because I'm busy. So after some time, John was, a, or rather, Father William went into the diocese. And at that day, naabta niya si John nga lucid. normal ang iyahang panultion. Dili siya wild. Kaning... 
peaceful young continent. So Father William interviewed him with small talks. How are you, John? What was your work before? What are you doing now? Are you married? And just simple kaning ko an communication with him. And after that, Father William immediately put in the essential nature of his work. Ingon dayon siya kang John. Now, John, what is your secret in life? Nakurat si John sa question. I mean, what is it that you've been hiding deep within you? Probably you are ashamed of, you are guilty, or you are afraid of. And then John stood up and walked out. Milakaw siya. Ni uli. Mingon si Father William. Well, nilakaw man ng ako ang client. Ni walk out man. Uli na lang po ko sa mua. So, ni uli si Father William. After some time, the bishop called again Father William. Father William, John is in the state of possession. Could you come? Yes, bishop. I have time. So, at to da yun si Father William sa lugar. And then, nagta niya si John at the time. Kanang daw gipusses. Wild. Shouting and all these things. And then, Father William told the people around who have been praying for him, supporting na matabangan si John, ingon siya, Could you please give us some kind of privacy, John and myself? Ingon dahin sila, Well, Father, you know what you are doing, so we are just outside. If you want our help, we are always here to support you and help you. Okay, salamat ka, ayo. So they left him, them, John and William. And while they have already their privacy, Father William asked him, John, what is your secret in life? And then from that time on, John broke down. Meaning, he really cried out. He really lamented. And really, kaning in the process of catharsis. Ni hilak siya, ni syagit siya, ni padayag siya karoon sa iyang sikreto. Bingun da yun siya. Father William, I have told you before that I'm a retired soldier dito gikan sa Vietnam. While I was assigned there, life is so excruciatingly helpless and hopeless and painful and hurtful. We live a life fearing death and we grieve, we grieve the death of our companions. We are guilty of killing even what seems to be innocent people, and so on and so forth. But the worst case scenario, Father, was this. One time we have had our card playing. And instead of betting money, we bet our sexuality. Meaning, kung kinsay mapilde sa amo ang sugal, Mahuin mong sex object sa grupo, literally, Father. Unfortunately, I lost that game. And I was literally raped by my own companions. Imagine ni mo, Father, mga sundalo, mga brusko, huwag hungry for sex, mga lalaki. Huwag tungod ni Ana, I was so helpless, crying out for mercy, but they continued and pursued their hunger for flesh against me and on me, abusing me. And I was really helpless in that case. And it was so painful and hurtful for me that it did happen to me in that part of the world in my own personal experience. And while John was telling that story, he was also expressing his pain, his hurt, his anger, his questions in life against God, against the government, and against his own companions. And he cried and cried. And then after telling his secrets in life, in the language of sacred scriptures, the process of lamentations and confessions, Father William embraced him and told him, John, now it is okay. Everything is now okay. The Lord understands you. He forgives you and he loves you so much. 
I understand you and I also love you. Now it is okay. Everything will be fine. Everything will be okay. The Lord loves you so much and the Lord heard you. And you know what? Without performing exorcism, John was healed. After two years, he got married. So, muna siya ang panginahanglan sa ato ang panahon karun. The process of healing and renewal by which we encounter angels in our lives nga mo'y maka-assist sa tua, makatabang sa tua in the spirit of compassion and mercy, in the spirit of understanding and love, without judgment, without condemnation, without rejection. But forgiveness, reconciliation, understanding, love, and healing. Angels na maka-assist sa tua while we go through the process of entering into our desert lives. Entering into our secrets or encountering the wild animals of our lives. That is, ang ato ang mga sikreto, ang ato mga kasakit, ang ato mga kaguol, ang ato ang mga kasuko, gani, ug ato ang mga shame. Din ato kining mahilak, mapadayag, ngadto sa mga tao nga makasabot ka nato. In the language of Father William Jarima, by grieving it out loud to significant others. That is, in the language of the sacred scriptures, by lamenting it and confessing it to the person who knows how to receive it in the spirit of understanding and love, of compassion and mercy, without judgment, without condemnation. Maukini ang gikinahanglan sa atong panahon gayud karun, where there are so many families who are broken and shattered, Individuals who are wounded and lost and afraid. Nga kinahanglan gayud ang ginoo o mga tao nga mamahimong instrumento nga mahimong anghel sa ato ang kinabuhi aron ato gayong masinati ang healing o renewal ang conversion o ang peace. Let us now stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from life, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through Him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayer of the Faithful As we take the first steps in our Lenten pilgrimage, we realize our need to undergo conversion in response to the Lord's invitation. Aware of our faults and weaknesses, we cry out, Lord, have mercy on your people. For the entire church, who is always in need of conversion, may she follow the lead of the Spirit in rejecting all the allurements of Satan. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy on your people. For the Holy Father and all other spiritual leaders, 
May their efforts to bring people closer to Jesus in this Lenten season be crowned with success. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy on your people. For all the migrant workers all over the world, may they be treated with respect and justice and soon be reunited with their families. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy on your people. For all the Filipinos working abroad, may they treasure their dignity and faith and be loyal to their loved ones. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy on your people. For all the preachers of retreats and recollections, may their words be a faithful echo of the message of Jesus and bring all to a lasting conversion. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy on your people. For all of us, may we spend this Lenten season in a spirit of penance and fruitful conversion from our unquestion ways. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy on your people. For all the deceased brothers and sisters, may they be admitted to the joys of eternal life in heaven, especially the victims of COVID-19, the deceased members of the sponsors, benefactors, and cooperators of the Pauline Media Mission, through the mercy of God and the intercession of all the saints. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy on your people. Lord Jesus, grant us the grace we need to always reject the devil's temptations and live according to the gospel you preach. You who live and reign forever and ever. my dear brothers and sisters that our sacrifice is acceptable to God the Father Almighty give us the right dispositions O Lord we pray to make these offerings for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time through Christ our Lord the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining forty long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent taught us to cast out the leaven of malice. So that, celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we pass over at last to eternal Paschal feast. And so, with the company of angels and saints, as we sing the hymn of your praise without end, we acclaim. Oh, oh, oh. 
Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewful, so that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, again giving you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we are gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Romulo, our Archbishop, together with George and Archbishop Capalia Emeritus, and all the clergy and the religious, and the entire people whom you have redeemed. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we merit to be called ears to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Let us now pray for the coming of God's kingdom in the words Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we are always freed from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you have said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer to each other our sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called in his banquet. Lord, I am the Lord Jesus. For those who cannot receive Holy Communion, we pray the spiritual communion. Jesus, Master, you assure me, I am the life. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood will have eternal life. In baptism and in the sacrament of reconciliation, you have communicated to me this life of yours. Now, you nourish it by making yourself my food. Take my heart. Detach it from the vain things of the world. With all my heart, I love you above all things, because you are infinite good and eternal happiness. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity is strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we learn to hunger for for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Do you want to develop your spirituality that understands both what it means to be human and the importance of seeing others for what they are? Sacred. This book, Becoming Fully Human by Joan Chetister, is a book Good for you and me. Available at the Poland's Media Center, Bolton Street, Davao City, Philippines, at 100 pesos per copy. The Lord be with you. In your spirit. Please bow your head and pray for God's blessings. Your bountiful blessing, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people that hope grows in tribulation 
virtue strengthens in temptation, and eternal redemption is assured through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, with and the Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has been offered. Let us go in the love and peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.